You never know. Yeah, we're live. We good? Okay. Yeah, we're good. Good to go. Okay, guys, um, I'll start the intros again. Welcome very much to the next installment of our um, of our coach education series. Um, we're delighted that we have um, Belgian um, youth volleyball coach expert Christophe Deleuze with us this evening, who will be um, putting on a presentation and um, around um, how to be creative with exercises. So Christophe is the director of sport with Volley Vonderen um, in Belgium. He's also a coach education tutor with the CEV, the European governing body for volleyball. So Christoph first really came onto our um, radar, I suppose, in Slovenia um, a couple of summers ago, and uh, where he was delivering a session as part of the CEV coaches conference, where we had um, our own development officer, Connor Flood, and four, four teachers from Ireland. They came back raving about this Belgian fellow and, and said that we need to get him to Ireland. So we brought him over the following November. Christoph did a fantastic series of sessions with teachers uh, and our club coaches and loved Ireland so much that he agreed to join us virtually um, here this evening to, to, to keep going with our, with our education. Um, as I mentioned, please, uh, just some housekeeping, as I mentioned just at the start for the beginning, Please keep your microphones on mute, just so there's no background interference. If you have any questions, please pop them into the chat box at the bottom. Christoph may keep an eye on them throughout, and we may we may answer them at the end as well. But um, please feel free to pop your questions in the chat box. Um, all the video materials, all the links will be shared with you after this as well. And as I mentioned, we're, we're streaming live onto the Volleyball Island YouTube channel. So if there's anything you missed, you can head over there tomorrow and you can follow that. Um, so without further ado, I will hand over to the man himself who will get the show on the road. Christoph, the floor is okay, yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you for this lovely introduction. So it's nice to be here again. So like Gary mentioned before, I was uh, in Ireland a few months ago. It was a great experience. So it's good to be back. Uh, it's good to be back and to talk to you about be creative with exercise. So first of all, I want to present myself a little bit um, with some impressions from Estonia. Um, in Estonia, it was my last European visit. Um, and we did there some sessions like we did in Ireland, in Northern Ireland and in Scotland. So I'm Christoph, 45 years old, but mentally still a little child. And you will see it uh, during the presentation. So you can you can type the questions in a chat box. I will answer them after the presentation for the first time. And the second round will be after uh, the latest video. So at the end, there will be a video of 10 minutes and I will explain something how we work with children in Belgium. So when we have a look at the overview, so, okay, we are now in, uh, times of Corona. We have to be creative in times of Corona. And there will be a starting point from this webinar. And I will bring you uh, a few theoretical, but a lot of practical ideas. So the problem was, okay, a consequence of Corona. In Belgium also, we had no more training and no more competition. And I had in my job, um, uh, big problems with the regular volleyball training courses. So what did we do in Belgium? We start with online volleyball training courses. We start with creating a lot of webinars. But there was also the problem of you have to keep distance while playing volleyball. Uh, we have to keep distance of uh, a meter and a half. Is this impossible? No, be creative. And when we are creative, I have three keywords. And first of all, I want to show this to you. <laughs> So, 
So when children play volleyball, we want to train them in the skills they need to play volleyball. So the three keywords, the three most important goals are, first of all, fun. I want to see the smile on their faces. I want them to have fun. If they don't enjoy the game, they will play soccer, they will play rugby, they want to play something else. No, we want to develop some exercises so they uh, enjoy the game. Second of all, I want that they move a lot. Um, I have a son and my son is uh, at home sitting down and playing on his laptop, but he doesn't move a lot. So I want that the children I teach, children I give my exercise to, I want them to move a lot. And when you have fun and you move a lot, you want to play the game. And when you uh, practice often and you do something, then you learn these new skills. So we have to be creative. How can I create enough variation? Because, oh, this is a good exercise. And uh, okay, next week I will do the same exercise. And the week after I will do uh, exactly the same exercise. No, that's a problem. I don't want to give the same exercise over and over again. And this is why I call this be creative with the different exercise. This is why I want to see um, how we can uh, develop some uh, vari variations and not always give the same exercise. So you will see, uh, as I said before, some theoretical and some practical ideas. And during the presentation, you will see text and videos. Now the videos, uh, I can show you the best of the best, but that is not my intention. I want to show you real life. And what's with real life? Real life is, you will see some mistakes, you will see somebody trying to do the best. Someone else, it doesn't care. He doesn't want to practice. So this is real life. Uh, uh, the best of the best is for the national team or for the championship, etc. If you have questions, pop them into the chat box. Don't hesitate to ask them. And as Gary said before, after the presentation this evening or tomorrow, I will send the slides of the presentation and I will send you all the videos because we are very open minded. We all want that children around Europe and around the world that they can uh, practice volleyball, that they have new exercise, that the coaches can deliver something new. So I want to say, OK, let's go and uh, let's go. At the left, you have the theoretical. At the right, you have the practical and you see someone saying help okay it's a woman but uh when i was eight years old i was a little 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 man i'm still a little man not as little as before but uh when i was playing volleyball myself i have to look up to the other players because i was a very short player as an introduction i found uh, a video of um yeah, of my visit in Ireland. And I thought, okay, I want to show it to you. This was from the last visit of last year. And first of all, we went to a primary school. So yeah, you will see, it's a good workout for me. And you will see we are playing um, in pairs, uh, using balloons, using balls. So they have to move a lot yeah? and also Let's have a look at their faces. Eh? They are enjoying the game, but they are also very focused. They don't have time to wait and to do something else. They are always focused. So this was in the primary school now with two balls and a balloon. And we start always very simple, in a very simple way. And then we build up. And you will see these are other children. Uh, uh, these are the adults. This was after a session um, in the evening. And I think first exercise when I say, okay, keep the balloon alive, that uh, some of the coaches will say, oh, this little guy, what is he coming to do? But after 10, 15 minutes, they were already sweating a lot and they were enjoying the game. And you see, you can do it also with adults. Eh? Sometimes they, they were thinking, are we playing volleyball or are we in the circus? This guy is really great. I think he's over 65, 70, but he's enjoying the exercise. Here is the circus. 
I don't know if you see listening. And you see we are doing something like coordination using the ball and the balloon. Touch the ball with the balloon. So these are some simple ideas. And the last day they asked me, oh, okay, we have a school tournament, a little school uh, event. Is it possible to deliver the warming up? But there were 100 children over there. So what did we did? What did we do? We worked in pairs and only used the ball. And see, they are running around. They are enjoying themselves. And you will see there are some some coaches trying to do the same. So throw the ball in the air, clap in each other's hands, and then catch the ball. Here are some coaches. And you will see here, look at her face. This one try to catch the ball. Use your head. Yes, I succeed, yes. So this is something what I always want to show when you see the look on their faces, when you see what they are always doing, they are moving. So they are competing and in this way, they will learn a lot. So I will show you uh, something about how we work in Belgium. A training session, there are three parts. I know there are some teachers um, among the participants. And the first part is a general part. And the general part, uh, we want to, uh, okay, if I ever give the example of my son, uh, uh, he doesn't move a lot. We want in school that they move a lot. They have to sit and they have to listen to math, to, to the language, to uh, geography, but they have to move a lot during uh, other lessons. So we want them to run, we want them to jump, we want them to hit. And another aspect can maybe, we want them to act on coordination, uh, balance, space, anticipation, what we have to do. But in this part, it's not important if you, um, if you use volleyball exercise, there may be other exercise uh, like uh, running, like uh, soccer, like throwing the ball in different uh, ways. This is for the first part. The second part is the volleyball part. And we, we talk about the technical and tactical part. We learn them some new skills. Uh, they have to throw the ball higher. Okay, if I throw the ball higher, it's easier. I have more time. And then the third part is also very important for us. Uh, it's the games part. Eh? Uh, the kids want to are very competitive. They want to score points. They want to be the winner. So we have to uh, give them some games, but not the regular game, six versus six, but maybe a game one versus one, or maybe two versus two, or three versus three, etc., etc. Because it's not important to always play the regular game six versus six. So in the movie I showed you about Ireland, I used some materials. So you don't have to be afraid to use them during the, your exercises. Of course, there are some points of attention. Uh, safety first, don't leave your material lying around. Uh, watch out for injuries. But it's very important when you use this material there is, that there is a wow factor. You have to challenge. Wow! If I see this, I want I want to start. Please, please let me let me start. I want to I want to practice. So with these materials, you can adjust the level of difficulty. For example, a simple exercise, the same exercise by using maybe another kind of ball. A very a very simple example. Catch the ball after one bounce. When you do this with a regular ball, it's very easy. When you do this with a reaction ball, it bounces everywhere, so it's more difficult. So I will show you an example of material having fun with uh, the pool noodles. So here you will see that uh, these children, the youngest one is four and a half years old, they have to try to hit each other. And there was one one saying, okay, I will hit my coach. So we start with one exercise and then we, we work in pairs. 
Okay, slides the pool noodle and then the partner has to do an exercise. This is the same, but the partner has to do another exercise. The third one will be, don't slide the pool noodle, but throw the pool noodle. And the partner has to do another exercise. So we start from the same, and then we build up, we level up, we, we give enough variation. So they are doing the same and not the same. They are doing the same, but something else. So this is uh, in an easy way how you can create more exercise by using a little bit variation. So, but okay, um, I often get a remark from the coach. They say, okay, okay nice pool noodles. Uh, okay, we, we see a lot of materials, but we don't have enough material. How can we create now enough different exercises. So in times of Corona, everyone has to be creative. So be creative in a simple way. Um, for a few months, I had to stay home to work from home um, because of the COVID problem. And I had to look around in my house and okay, what can I use to be creative? So I used the towel, I used the bucket, a table, a ladder, and at a certain point, my wife was a little bit angry because I all also used an ironing board. She said, you stupid boy, what are you going to do with it? So I created a lot of exercise using an ironing board. So we created a lot of challenges. So we challenged the, the pupils in Belgium to do the same. So you have to think about how can we use this exercise and I will show you two videos. How can we use this during the training? How can we uh, use, for example, a bucket? How can we use a table? Okay. Uh, how can we use a ladder? Is it possible? So I will show you. This is the first one with the bucket. You will see uh, my son is not at his laptop anymore. And in front you will see, I think the most famous dog of CV. So we started very simple. Draw, touch one time. Now touch three times or maybe four times. So the second exercise is the first exercise plus third exercise, use your head and then the bucket. So you know the first exercise. Okay, and we level up. We make it more difficult. The fourth exercise is exactly, not exactly the same as the second exercise, but we used your head. So it's always, we bring, we add something to it. So in a very simple way, you can create some exercises using only a ball and a bucket. You can think, okay, a bucket. So I have uh, 20 players or uh, 20 students. Uh, I need 10 buckets. That's, that's impossible. So for the second example, I think everybody has a pair of socks. Everybody can bring a pair of socks with them. So I will demonstrate, be creative with a ball and a pair of socks. So you see exercise 1A, we do this exercise with the ball. The B exercises, we will do it with the pair of socks. And then at a certain point, we will do the combination. We will work with the ball and the pair of socks. Throw it with one hand. Do the same with the pair of socks, it's 2B. A little bit coordination. And I have, uh, I forgot to say, welcome in my garden. And I think starting from exercise four, we get the combination of 
we use the ball and the pair of socks. Here we go. Is this followable? No, this is for us, the general part of a session. Here we go again. Keep the ball alive. And the next one, keep the pair of socks alive. So the same exercise, but another level of difficulty because we use other materials. So on YouTube or on the Facebook page of CV, you can find, uh, I think, 20 challenges, the 20 challenges only using very simple material. Every challenges has at least, I think, six or seven exercises. So if you do them all, you have 120 exercises. But we start from one simple exercises and then, okay, let's go, be creative, uh, a lot of variation, etc. So how can we use the same material? Uh, because uh, sometimes I see coaches, first exercise, okay, we use the table. Second exercise, we will use a ladder. Third exercise, we will only use uh, bicycle tires. Next exercise, we will only use etc. etc. So it's too difficult for the organization. So try to use the same material during the three parts of the session the general part, the technical tactical part, and the game part. So, and I will give you an example using a tennis ball and some cones. In the general part, you can say, okay, each child has one cone and one tennis ball. Put a cone on the ground, throw the tennis ball in the air and try to catch the ball in the cone. Maybe after one bounce, maybe without a bounce. But we can do the same in the technical tactical part. For example, we work in pairs, play the volleyball in two times and you may choose how you play it. You play one with one, not one versus one, one with one. And while we are playing the volleyball in two times, we exchange the tennis ball with or without a one bounce. Yeah? Can you do this? How many times can you do this? And what do we use? We only use the ball, the cones, and the tennis ball. And when we talk about material, we, you will see I often use balloons. In Northern Ireland, they already call me the balloon boy because I always bring balloons along. There is a great advantage. So um, if you don't have uh, the reaction time, okay, the balloons stay longer in the air, so you have more time to react, to watch, okay, what do we have to do? Another advantage is you can use different colors. You can use different colors, try to catch uh, the yellow balloon and then the blue balloon. But there are also some points of attention. Uh, you can anticipate with extra balloons. If you have 20 students, pupils of uh, players, yeah, maybe if you want each child to have a balloon, maybe you can uh, blow up uh, 25 balloons because balloons often pop, uh, pop often, sorry. Some children are scared of balloons. Not often, but it happens that they are scared of balloons. And if you want them to stay long in the air, don't use small balloons. And as you see in the video of Ireland, yeah, what about balloons and adults? In this example, I want to show you, um, this is working with uh, 13, 14, 15 years old children. Uh, we can also use balloons with them. These are very simple exercises, but for some of them, it's difficult. Try to keep the balloon alive, voila. Number two, she struggles a bit. Do you manage in how many times can you sit down? In how many times can you stand up again? So 
So this was, I think it was in Northern Ireland, this example. When we have a look at other materials, you can, for example, uh, you can use hoops or maybe you can use bicycle tires. Um, when I think about using hoops, you can, um, yeah, you can use them as uh, rolling hoops. When you work with bicycle tires, you can lay them down in a row or maybe crisscross. Yeah? Uh, in a cross, is when it's crisscross, they have to make a choice. But there are also uh, some points of attention. So for the hoops, uh, it's not that easy for young children to roll the hoops. You can do a lot of exercise while uh, rolling the hoops. But when you roll the hoops, um, yeah, some of the coaches struggle to roll them. So watch out, maybe you can practice in advance. So it's, maybe it's, it's better when you do it uh, during the session. Hoops are also not stable. So you can fall when they lay down. For that, it's better to use bicycle tires. But with the bicycle tires, um, when they are worn, watch out for injuries eh, because they, you can in, uh, get injured uh, with the iron wire. So you will see another example of uh, hoops and bicycle tires. Um, and in this example, we work with as uh, someone is a horse and we work with the horse, we work with the balloon and we work with a regular ball. And you will see it's not only fun for the girls. This was at another school. It's also fun for the boys. Just try to hit the balloon with the ball, then bounce the ball and start over again. So they have to work together. They have to communicate. Uh, it's important on the field eh, when they play volleyball that they can communicate for, uh, with each other. So these are very uh, simple exercises uh, while they're learning to communicate. Now you have to go left, now you have to go right. Oh, uh, a little bit easy. Oh, eh? not as strong, etc., etc. So when I talk about this, my organization is always individual or in pairs. Individual is your own responsibility. Eh? Um, okay, do your best, try to do your best. And if you do your best, okay. Um, and if you don't do your best, okay. In pairs, when you don't do your best, your partner has a problem. So you have to do your best, not only for yourself, but also for your partner. And you need to communicate. You can also work in groups of three or four. That's no problem. But not in uh, groups of six, seven. And you see at the bottom, the, you see the picture. And the picture says, uh, okay, you went for to shop, eh? you went for groceries and you're standing there. Okay, oh, when it's up to me, uh, still five people for me, before me. Okay, I was just want to pay and to go home. So you need a lot of context. They have to play the ball uh, very often. If they don't play the ball often, or they don't enjoy this, they don't enjoy, they don't have fun. And if they don't have fun, they will do another sport. Uh, speaking of other sports, you can have a look at other sports, not to practice other sports, but maybe you can find some ideas. Uh, in other sports, you can also find useful exercise to put, for example, in the first part of a session, the general part. So you have to think about how can I use this in my training session? Or how can I use this um, in my school? And I will show you an example of a sport badminton and the exercise, you can use it in a general part. You won't see an exercise, a badminton exercise. You will see something uh, that you can use in any sport.
So maybe you you know this, it's tic-tac-toe. They're working in two little groups. So this is like a warming up in badminton, but you can also use it in our favorite sport, and that's called, of course, volleyball. So have a look, uh, you will find some, some examples on YouTube. Um, last week I found some interesting examples uh, in tennis. But then you have to think about how can I use this um, in my group? They don't have the same level. And if I see this on, uh, on YouTube, I have to adjust this exercise. Maybe it's too, too difficult and I have to make it more easy. Maybe, oh, for others, oh, but it's too easy. Okay, make it more difficult. Ah, but if I see this, I can make another exercise. So be creative. Eh? If you see something like this, how can I use this in my training session? How can I use this uh, in my school? And then um, when you see, well, for example, uh, the video with the pool noodles, I made it last week in 2020. Um, you can see some exercises from last year, or maybe for 2015. And then there are other exercises and they say, oh, it's too old, it's not useful. No, maybe you, there are some exercises you can use from the past. Eh? You can find some inspiration, and that's the idea. Find some inspiration, don't copy them, but find some inspiration using older material. And in Belgium, we have a very famous uh, coach. He's called Emile Rousseau. He started with the children from one and a half year. And then at the end, he, wor he worked with the Belgian champions of uh, Knack Rousselaar. And now he's working in France and he's doing a great job. And in 2006, so 14 years ago, uh, he made a DVD with a lot of very interesting exercises. And some of them you can use in the second part of the training session. You can use it in the technical, tactical part. And you will see it's an old video from 14 years ago, but it will be an inspiration for you. You can use it. You will see, okay, there are, there are a lot of um, children over there and the club didn't have enough balls. So some of the children have to wait for a little, for a few seconds. And you will see one player, one ball and doing the exercise. Throw the ball into the net, try to catch it before the bounce and then throw the ball in the air after one bounce, play. This is another example. And you will see 14 years ago, these children, now they're all adults. Some of them already have children. Some of them are married. Some of them are still students, etc., etc. So for the first thing, for the, to end the first uh, part of the presentation, I want to make a deal. So I gave this webinar yesterday uh, in Estonia and the day before I gave it in uh, Finland and last week I gave it in Scotland and I want to make a deal with all of you. In Belgium, we are preparing a lot of new exercises. If you think, okay, it's interesting. Uh, I like to try this in my club. I like to try it in my school. You can have everything for free, eh? so no charge. Because we want, uh, there, is, there is, in Belgium we say, sharing is caring. Eh? I would think it's very useful if you think it's interesting that you can have it. So why do we have to pay for it? We all want the funny faces. We all want them uh, to practice for the ball. So you can have everything for free. Eh? As I told uh, in the beginning, you can have the presentation, you can have the videos, it's no problem. As a, a little, 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 little condition, a little bit. Eh? So just let us know if the children like these exercises. Maybe you can send an email or maybe you can make a picture of them of a little video. So 
we want a lot of happy faces uh, and a lot of happy faces in Europe and in the world. So to end this first part, I want to say thank you. And I want to say uh, once more, be creative. So this is the end of this one. I don't know if there at the moment are some questions. You can uh, type them uh, in the chat over there. Great, Christoph. Um, thank you for that. Um, some, some fantastic ideas, I suppose. Yeah, look, guys, if you have any questions, please pop them into the chat. Um, and I would kind of act as a MC, I suppose. Um, and then, yeah, we'll get them asked and we'll get them answered. Christoph, one question from me. Um, obviously, you talked throughout that, that presentation around the importance of the child having fun and enjoying it enjoying mm -hmm. the, the exercise what what are the key ingredients would you say that needs to go into an exercise to ensure that you have them smiley faces you know is it um lots of touches of the ball is it just being involved is it an element of challenge an element of competition like what would you say and i'm not trying to answer that, that, that question myself <laughs> mm -hmm. what would you say are, are the key ingredients so first of all uh at the beginning, I told you I'm 45 years old, but mentally I'm a little child. So I, I play with the children, I challenge them. Uh, that's the first one. Second one, if you, be, if you give realistic exercise. The realistic exercises, if it's too difficult, they don't enjoy it. But if it's too easy, oh, what will they do? They will say, okay, it's too easy, so I will do it once, I will do it twice, but I don't like it. Mm. Uh, third one is um, a lot of variation. If not, maybe the first time they will enjoy it, but the second time, oh, it's the same. I did it last week. And last one, uh, if you have the possibility to, to use materials, but very simple, uh, like the last week, the the pool noodles, uh, the children, they saw the pool noodles and said, oh, I want to go, go, okay, I want to hit you. So these are some, some ingredients. Um, and uh, I see uh, a question, what is the ideal age of kids to start playing six versus six? Yeah. Mm. Um, it's, it depends. Uh, so in Belgium, normally it's uh, six versus six for the under 15, but I like to say, there's a difference between the level they have and the biological age. So normally we play uh, six versus six uh, when you're under 15. But sometimes there are some talented children. And when they're uh, 11 years old, they play six versus six. And sometimes we have uh, children of uh, 15 years old and they're still playing four versus four. four. Does it depends? So normally it's uh, under 15, uh, but it depends on the level they have. And that's, um, yeah, that's, a, that's a challenge because if you uh, start too early playing six versus six, there are not enough uh, contacts. And when there are not enough contacts, yeah, they are standing there and okay they're not enjoying themselves so it depends so it's 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 i want to answer in in two parts for first part is under 15 second part is uh watch out there is a big difference between the biological age and uh the level uh, they have sometimes children start playing volleyball at the age of 12 so they don't have the level of uh playing six versus six Sure. Um, just, just kind of on top of that as well, Christoph. It's something that um, this this concept of uh, long term player development or LPAD, long term athlete development, as as it could be known or is known in, in some areas, 
it's something that we've been looking a lot at in terms of developing our role model for, for Ireland and what games and what formats of games are, are appropriate at each at each age level. And we had um, we we have we've had um, workshops on this with Tom Landers, um, a coach we have mm -hmm. here in, in Newbridge, who's done some fantastic stuff with his approach of how they develop players at Newbridge and following that LTAD model. We also had a four week webinar series with um, Vanya Gribic. Mm -hmm. um, who is very um, supportive and promotes the, the concept of um, specific game formats at, at ages linked to biological and more than chronological age. So it's something that we're working on here in Ireland and we, we expect to publish our own long-term player development model um, in, in the coming months. So that, that question was from Adrian. So Adrian, just um, keep, keep a lookout for that um, because it will certainly give a little bit more structure about how we, how we look to develop Players. Okay, and you're very welcome, Adrian. So we use we use uh, a little bit the model of Argentina. Although they they also play one one and two two. So um, as I said, mm -hmm. when you uh, when you work alone, you have your responsibility. When you work in pairs, you have to communicate. But and you play in three contacts. If you don't have the first contact, you have for sure the second contact. So you always have enough enough uh, contacts. And that's the difference when you play six six and you you yeah your level is not six six don't play six six and there's a difference between playing six six during the games during the competition and during a training session maybe you play six six um, in competition but at the other side uh, you can give training sessions with two two and three three and that's a big difference. So, okay, if you have any more questions, you can type them in the chat box. Um, you can see the video normally. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I will show you, this is a video uh, I will sh also share with you. And I want to show, uh, I, I, I gave some examples, I gave some little videos and I gave some text, some ideas. Yeah. These are a video I made, um, we made for a CV school project. So these are exercises you can also use in the different schools. So we start very simple, very simple way. And what do we do? One player, one balloon. So this is very easy. Keep the balloon up, tap it with one hand, left hand, right hand, uh, first left, then right. So you, you can choose. But then next step, Preparation of spiking. Try to walk around with the balloon in the air, but you may not squeeze it. Uh, if not, you squeeze it, it's no problem. You can go around. So, okay, walk around, but next step, and have a look at the girl. You do the same on your knees, and here she comes. There she is, very focused. And the next one is having fun at your right. She's having fun. And then we go by sitting. So the exercise is the same as the first exercise. Eh? So we, we try to do it. Then second exercise, uh, try to do the same, but you may not use your hands anymore. You use everything but your hands. And okay, they have to make choices. Sometimes, okay, some of the children are using the foot, their feet, other the head. Okay, and it's, it's not that easy. This is uh, a little bit similar, like I showed you from the video of Northern Ireland. But these children are uh, nine, 10 years old. You see at your left, that, uh, that girl wants to be in the picture. You will see her often again. So do the same while standing back up. Yeah? Use your feet, kick it. So this is for me all in the general part. Is this volleyball? Sometimes preparation of spiking, uh, but it is coordination, it is reaction, it is so use your head, sit down, use your foot, stand up again, etc. And you see the permanent focus. Here, this is, I, wa I want to stop for a moment. So you see uh, the balloon, and now. We add the cardboard. 
And a little uh, a little story about the cardboard. Last last year we had the European Championship, and there were some cardboards. Uh, we ordered some cardboards, and there were five colors. And normally, we had to order in total ten thousand cardboards. But there was a little bit a mistake, and we ordered accidentally ten thousand cardboards for each color. So in total, we had 50,000 cardboards. So I have enough cardboards to use them during my sessions for the rest of my life. So, and you see workarounds, balance, and they may choose how they do it. You see the focus again. Use it, left, work around. Next step can be run around here. When the coach say go or yes or up, claps in his hands, push the balloon in the air and try to catch it while sitting on the cardboard. I tried to do this. It was very difficult for me. Sit down, try to catch it. Push the balloon in the air, sit on your cardboard after two taps, and then up, sit down. But they know the exercise. They know the first exercise. We did it before, some of the previous exercises. Okay, this is for the underhand pass. Yeah. Fold the cardboard and walk around. The youngest one is eight years old. So it's not playing like we are used to for playing six, six. Try to balance. Okay. And now next step. And you don't use your arms. You bump the balloon in the air. Point of attention. Bend your knees. And then next step, combination of balloon and the reaction ball. In the presentation, I told you about, okay, um, throw the ball in the air after one bounce, catch it. Throw the reaction ball in the air after one bounce, catch it. Here is a combination of balloon and reaction ball. And the idea is, and you will see, tap your balloon twice. Hit it high, bounce the reaction ball, and try to catch the reaction ball and the balloon. You will see it's not that easy. It's unpredictable. Where did it go? Hop, try to catch it. So this is the same exercise, but instead of using the reaction ball, we use a regular volleyball. You will see it's much more easy than when you use the reaction ball. So it's the same ID, but you use other material. And then we go on uh, with, you know, I'm the balloon guy. So we use again the ball and the balloon. But you see again the permanent focus. You hit the balloon, bounce the ball. Next step. Hit, tap, bounce. So we started with the first exercise. Hit, hit, again, again, again. Now we are first, second, third. So it's a little bit complicated. If you do this as a first exercise, it's too difficult for them. But now they know the previous exercise and the exercise before. So they know, okay, first ah, I did that, then I did that. Now it's one and two and one, two, three. So you see, when you do it like this, yeah, you can create some more complicated exercise and you have to think about first, second, third. You see the focus, next, 
first and second is the same third is variation now first still hitting the ball the balloon second tap with the ball but third is now instead of bouncing uh, bring the ball around your body so they know first and second okay i know what it is and now what we will do with the rest Next one, another variation. First and second is the same. Third part of the exercise, the ball between the legs. So they know what to do. So there are some little variations. Okay, here we go with, uh, we work in pairs. We have a ball, we have a balloon, and we have a bicycle tire. So, in this exercise, they still have time enough. So we give the girl with the bicycle tire an extra assignment. You will see it in the next variation. Okay, time enough, go. And just in time to do the exercise again. So your partner goes through the tire. And you see, they have to work together. You see this girl sweating, she is eight years old. And here we go again with our horse. So keep the balloon in the air with the ball. And the partner with the bicycle tire can make it difficult. Not too difficult like these two, but they can make it difficult. Look at their faces, are they having fun? So here we go, we add something to it, tap the balloon twice, bounce the ball once. They are helping each other. So they are working in pairs, they have to communicate. Here we do the same, but both players, children, yeah, they are together in a tire. So you see the focus. And then again, first, second. So we make it okay, more difficult, level up. We add something to it. One, two, and then it's up to the partner. One, two, and then it's up to the partner. Okay, now, next. Only another idea, we will only use a ball. This is too easy for them. Okay, we make it more difficult. And then we will do the same series of exercises, but instead of using a ball, we will use a reaction ball. And you will see it will, it's for some of them too difficult. But as I told you, it's real life. It's not the best of the best. So we go again and you see, this is the same exercise as we started with the ball, but the reaction ball goes everywhere. This is an example of preparation of overhead pass. Now the same, but tap it as much as you can. Watch her face, watch her going. She's going and again and again. She's looking for solutions. How can I keep the uh, ball alive? This is um, working with assignments when I say, I, I have to throw the ball and you have to tap the ball. If I say you, you have to throw the ball and I will tap the ball. So there are two possibilities. Another idea is eye hand coordination. When you solve the challenge uh, in COVID times with uh, the ball and the pair of socks, you can do 
uh, similar exercises by using a disk cone. So, so some ideas starting very simple and then before catching, clap your hands one time, maybe two times. Then next step, front, back, front. Two times, three times. Next step is working in pairs and throw the disc coin to each other. Very simple. Partner up, very simple. And the next exercise is a combination of the first and the second. And you will see first, throw it, clap, catch it, and then throw it back to the partner. So this is simple, simple material. This is uh, this was something new, and uh, have a look at other sports, but have a look at other countries. I think I found this ID in the Netherlands, and the idea was to use playing cards, or you can also use colored cardboard. So I use two colors, uh, pink and purple. And they have to find out how to throw the two card cards to each other. It's not that easy. I try to catch them. Watch her face. I want to show it again. Watch her face. Just try to throw them instead of a ball. Watch her face. Yeah, I managed to do it. This one. I use the playing cards. Before I throw them, I say purple or pink. When I say purple and I throw both cards, my partner has to catch the purple card. If I say pink, the same. When you will make it more difficult, when I say purple, I have to catch the pink one. When I say pink, I have to catch the purple one, etc., etc. So try to find out how can I use uh, these materials in a very simple way. How can I uh, give enough variation so I can do the similar exercises, but by using something else, uh, other material, they will say, okay, very nice. Uh, it, it's, it's not always the same. So this was the end of uh this video so if you have more questions don't hesitate to ask them uh, and as i told you before you can have afterwards the uh, video no problem so if you have problem uh, if you have questions i have still some time left uh, Christoph, look, we, we won't take up all of your all of your evening but i have a few questions that have, that have come in here come in um one of them is around obviously there's not or what well, there is um kind of volleyball um skills involved in those games and exercises but they're not obvious kind of volleyball skills yeah it seems that the focus is really on developing the movements required to yeah. execute those volleyball skills yeah at that age group is that something that you really spend most of your time focusing on yeah, um, we start at the age of one and a half years old, the, the movement schools, and this is the basic. And when they become older, eh, we have the general movement in the first part of uh, the training session. When they are, uh, for example, 13 years old, um, it's more technique and less general movement. So for the younger children, it's very important to create situations. Uh, when I say higher, uh, uh, play higher, okay, I can say 10 times, or I can find or create uh, a situation like uh, throw the ball in the air, clap in your hands. If you want to clap it three times, you have to, to throw the ball higher. Yeah. If you don't that, okay, you, you uh, there will be no success. So in this age category, it's important to create some situations that they do it without knowing that they do it. And you saw on the video, um, the preparation of the underhand pass. So if 
in, in my time, okay, you want to play, uh, okay, go against the, the wall, play 20 minutes. Yeah, okay, I will learn something, but I don't like it. So, and this is the general movement. Uh, first of all, it's important that they move a lot and that there is a preparation. And later on, um, and I come back to the question of Adrian, when we uh, start working one, one, two, two, three, three, etc., they will play six, six later on better than when you start six, six. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and do the so you don't you wouldn't really go into the detail then with with kids at 10, 11, 12 of why you are doing this exercise. It's literally just okay. This is the exercise. Play. Let's go. Yeah, first of all, uh, maybe 12 years, okay, that's something else. But when we start, when you see with the pool noodles with six, seven, eight years old, I don't care the technical stuff. Yep. So if I if I do something um, and and they, for example, before you can spike, you have to try to hit it. So the pool noodle is uh, hit me. So mm. So if you are afraid to hit the ball, how can you spike? How can you run? How can you jump? How can you spike? So first of all, when you do these uh, different things in different ways, at the end, when it's the combination of the technique, it's always it's always better. So I think last time I went to Ireland in the presentation, uh, I don't know I don't know anymore. I think it was also about blocking the ball with the beach ball. So very simple way. Are they thinking about blocking? No, they try to, okay, the coach is hitting and I try to, to, to block it, but they don't know the word blocking yet. So, yeah. but at the age of 12, it's, it's more important for the technique. But when we work with the primary school children and, 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 and exactly with the seven, eight, nine years old, it's for me, it's not important. There are other coaches saying uh, technique is important from the first step. So, okay, I disagree, but everyone has his vision. Sure, sure. So it's almost, I suppose, when you, the example there with the beach ball, the inflatable beach ball and the block, I suppose it's almost creating a certain element of muscle memory. Yeah. If that's the right phrase. So yeah. further down the line, when that skill is being taught in more detail, yeah. the child already has the, the foundation and the building blocks of that. Yeah. So I have two, uh, when I work with the children at that age, they have two big um, keys, the big hands and the long arms. And when you use big hands and long arms, you can do a lot of things with them. Yeah. So instead of saying, put your hands like that, or the, no, try to use it, uh, try to use uh, lighter balls instead of the regular ball. Uh, try to... Um, adjust the net height, um, maybe a lower net, maybe um, a higher net if you want to create uh, a high passes. So it, it depends. So it's very important that you create these situations. Sure. Um, I have a question here from Des. Um, he's asking about um, kind of how do you engage with parents and educate them? So perhaps a parent may not have uh, come from a volleyball background, so they, they bring their child to a volleyball class, but they don't see the child actually playing volleyball as such. Is there a certain amount of work goes into explaining to the parents why you're doing these exercises or do the parents kind of understand yeah. that anyway? No, no, because a few weeks ago there were some two new children and after the, the session they said, okay, it was nice, we had fun, but we didn't play volleyball. So it's always when they come, you, you explain something, you explain the three parts, you explain why they have to move. I always give the example of my son sitting down uh, and that is laptop. So it's the idea and sometimes in some videos, you can see, okay, if you do this, later on, you can do this technique. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to show these examples. Um, you have uh, for sure explained that um, it's not always 6-6. Six, six. 
Um, for example, the f um, when we play the one versus one, we have five different levels, one versus one. So it's easier to explain, okay, uh, you have to work on the level you have instead of, okay, you, you are 12 years old, you have to play this. When you have uh, 50 years old, you have to play six versus six. I have a few years ago, I had, I had a team with uh, the children, uh, children, <clears throat> the young women, uh, 16, 17, 18 years old, and they were all starting playing volleyball. So during competition, we played 6-6, six, six, or the first months we weren't playing. Eh? But mm. during the training sessions, it was catching and throwing, and step by step, and after a few months, uh, okay, they succeeded to, 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 to win some, some games. Uh, and this is, but this is the long term vision. Uh, if you want to see the short term vision, okay, uh, four versus four because that age, no, it is the long term vision. But you have to explain it sometimes. So yeah. each year, each season, we start with, with some explaining. Uh, we have a moment with the parents and we tell them what we are doing and why we do this. But um, when you start with the movement schools in the club I work now at the moment, um, we also have a movement school. So they already know uh, what's the idea. But when you yeah. don't have the movement school, you have to explain sometimes, okay, this is the idea. So, yeah. Okay. And the, the movement school, um, now I've seen uh, when you're in Ireland, you, you showed a video of, the, the, the one and two year old sliding down the yeah. bench and up the obstacle is almost like a, an obstacle course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think at the time you were saying it's a great, uh, it's a great revenue stream for the clubs as well. You know, 60, 70 children may come on a Saturday morning and the parent will be involved in that because they'd be involved in the exercises as well. Yeah. And that, that was also, uh, children for different sports. So a lot of these children later on they they won't play volleyball. So, but mm. the movement schools is uh, for all the sports. Okay. So it's a mix of all the sports. It's not a volleyball club. It's the movement school. Interesting. It's very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, a question from Aurelian. Um, he's asking for some practical kind of tips or ideas to help grab uh, the attention of the children at the very start of an exercise? How do you get children engaged straight away? Yeah, so first of all, I, I will refer once again to the pool noodles. Um, the first minute, do with them what you do, what you want. Do what you want, no problem. But after one minute, everybody stops and now get around and now we start. So they know they know, first of all, um, if they see something, eh, if you see something and uh, as a parent, you uh, tell to your child, no, you may not touch it. Eh? Sure. That's the wrong idea. Touch it, do what you want. But after one minute, now you stop, you do what I want. And um, I showed a lot of variation. An exercise, the, dur the duration of one exercise, some coaches, uh, the duration of one exercise is five, six minutes. In five, six minutes, I gave eight, nine exercises, the basic and all the variations. So if you, if they have to practice uh, the same exercise too long, mm. the, the, there's a problem with the concentration. So if you uh, see, okay, after one minute, after a minute and a half, okay, next exercise. And, and you can keep them focused by always uh, there are some small details or some details that I change. So when, when there are big changes, it's a problem and they have to reflect, okay, now I have to do this. Uh, what was it again? And when you um, get the small details, they know the process, they know what will be the next step and it will be no problem. Sure. Uh, and then um, concerning the organization, it's important to work in little groups. When you work in little groups, it's always better for the concentration at that age than when you work in the, the groups of six and seven. Okay. And at the various age groups, Christoph, um, how long 
should a should a training session last? So for six and seven year olds, what is what is a good length of time to have them? Uh, um, it it depends, but not longer than an hour and a half. Okay. So we use normally. Uh, sometimes the coach had two hours, but it's too long for the for the little ones. Eh, movement school is always one hour. And then you can see, I now uh, I have the under nine and we work uh, an hour and a half. But when you work very active, mm -hmm. it's one hour and a half, it's okay. When you don't work uh, very active, uh, two hours is no problem. But I want, I want them from the first till the last minute, very active, very moving, very sweating. So, so yeah. an hour and a half and the general part you can say between 20 and 25 minutes. Uh, the second part, the technical, tactical part, you can say, um, yeah, okay, you can say uh, 40, 45 minutes, and then the games part, maybe uh, 20 minutes. Okay, sure. And um, thank you for that. Guys, um, look, we'll, we'll give people another 30 seconds or so if anyone has any more questions, they'd like to pop in the chat. Um, and then I'm kind of conscious we've had you for a good near almost an hour and a half, uh, Christoph. So we, 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 we should let you go. Um, no any more problem questions, guys? Pop them in the, jar, in the chat there. I can't see anything coming in. Um, boom, boom, boom. I think. I think we're good. Okay, I think we're good. I think so good. I, I want to say thank you to you all. Um, thank you also when I see Rani Asfur, thank you. Uh, I hope that it was interesting for you. I hope it's some inspiration. I also hope that you can be creative. Um, and for me, uh, in these times, I also want to say, uh, keep safe. Christoph, thank you very much. A gentleman as always. Um, Guys, thank you very much for joining tonight's webinar. Uh, I hope it was, well, I'm sure it was. Look, I, I gained a lot. I'm sure everybody did. So thank you for joining. I will send an email tomorrow with the various links. Um, we have your email from the registration Zoom. So if, if you don't mind, I'll pop that out to you with a, with a link to the YouTube video as well. So you can watch back if there's anything that you missed. You can catch that as well. So thank you again um, for joining us. I'm Christoph. Um, thank you again so much. For, for You're very welcome. Stay safe, guys. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye.